Hallelujah. This evening, we shall quickly look at the subject, the almightiness of God. The almightiness of God. Jeremiah chapter 32 verse 17. He said, Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by your great power and stretched out arm. And there is nothing too hard for thee. Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm. And there is nothing too hard for thee. Verse 27. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? What is the answer? No. Looking at the almightiness of God, We are looking at the weightiness. The almightiness of God refers to the weightiness of God. The word glory is the Hebrew word kabod and the Greek word dogza. Both of them means weight. The almightiness of God is the weightiness of God. Also the almightiness of God is the massiveness of God. The weight God carries, the massiveness of God. Also the almightiness of God is the sovereignty of God. The sovereignty of God. And fourthly, the almightiness of God is the measurelessness of God. The measurelessness. The God that cannot be measured, can't be sized. Measurelessness of God. What is the meaning or the implication of the almightiness of God to somebody here tonight? First, the almightiness of God is the answer to the wickedness of the enemy. The almightiness of God is the answer to the wickedness of the enemy. It's as if God deploys himself like a bulldozer against that devil to collapse him. Everywhere you see how wicked that enemy is. 
The almightiness of God is the answer. Number two, the almightiness of God is the answer to the impossibilities of life. That is, God is big enough and powerful enough to tackle whatever is called impossible. The almightiness of God is the answer to the impossibilities of life. I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is, is there anything too hard for me? Nothing. Thirdly, the almightiness of God establishes the faithfulness of God. He uses his power to perform his promise. The almightiness of God establishes the faithfulness of God. His power and his might causes him to say, to do what he said. His power makes him perform his promise. He said I will do it and his power got it done. The almightiness of God establishes the faithfulness of God. It causes him to say it and do it. Number four, the almightiness of God establishes the limitlessness of God. The God that cannot be hindered. It establishes the limitlessness of God. The God that exceeds all human expectations and imaginations. The limitlessness of God. The almightiness of God establishes the limitlessness of God. The God that cannot be stopped and cannot be sized. That was number four. Number five. The almightiness of God is the answer to the helplessness of man. Helplessness. Hebrews chapter 4 and in verse 16. Say let us come boldly therefore. To the throne of grace. That we may obtain mercy. And find grace to help in time of need. You see, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. When you are helpless, then I am powerful. When you are helpless, then I am powerful. The almightiness of God is the answer to the helplessness. Of man. Number six, the almightiness of God is the doorway to the resources of God. It's the doorway to the to the lavish abundance of God. about God is big if it is God it is big nothing about God is small God is the reason why big things like this are done and bigger things like this are on the way finally the almightiness of God 
is what overrules the verdicts of man. The almightiness of God overrules the verdicts or decrees of man. Men said it, God said no. Men said it, God overruled. The almightiness of God overrules the verdicts or decrees of man. That is, God is bigger than man. So when man has said what he wants to say, God says what he wants. Somebody say amen. If you want to see this bigness of God, this almightiness, the heaviness of God, what do you do? What is key to seeing the almightiness of God? Number one, faith. In God. Faith in God. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. Without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You want to see the bigness of God you must release active faith or our robots of blessed memory he put a sign in his office once you step in and that sign says make no small plans here you can make any plan you want, but if it is here, don't make any small plan. That was a man that God used in his generation to change history. Faith in God. Believing for anything. Believing in multidimensional possibilities. Faith in God. Not a heart that is shaking. But I believe that God is real and God is, is true. Faith in God. Number, number two. And if you remember also John chapter 11 verse 40. Jesus said. If you will believe. You will see the almightiness of God. You will see the glory of God. Faith in God. Number two is death to self. Death to self. The almightiness of God responds to the nothingness of man. John chapter 12 verse 23. He said now is the son of man glorified. The hour has come for the son of man to, to see glory like never before. But for that to happen, the corn of wheat must fall to the ground and die. Otherwise it abides alone, but if it dies, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. When anybody claims that he is something, God will prove to him that he is nothing. And when you consider yourself as nothing, then God will prove to the world that you are something. Arrogant people never see God. Proud, braggadocious, boastful people never see the almightiness of God. Even if you are gifted, talented, endowed, you surrender it to God as if you have nothing. Because you say, without me, you can do nothing. Everything you have came from me. When Elisha wanted to raise the dead in his lifetime, he struggled. You remember Elisha? He wanted to raise the widow, the, 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 the child of the widow of, of, of the Shunammite woman. He gave his rod to Gehazi. Gehazi went, the child didn't raise up. He himself went 
laid on the child like seven times, breathed into the child. It was a struggle before the child came up. But when he died, they were burying somebody and the body of that person touched his dead bones and the person jacked up on the spot. He struggled while he was alive to see that kind of miracle. After he had died, no struggle. Why? Because the person that could have taken the glory was no more alive. It happened effortlessly. That first miracle, Second Kings chapter 4, from verse 23, there about all the way to the end. When the woman came for the child, then the second miracle, Second Kings chapter 14, from verse 18, 19, there about. When, go ahead. 20. Yes. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll check it out. And they were bringing a dead man. He struggled to raise the dead in his life, but in his death, no struggle. Many things that God would have done in our lives. The element of vain glory is too much, so God couldn't do much. Death to self, Second Kings 13, that's right. And in verse 21, and it came to pass as they were burying the man that behold, they spied a band of men and they cast the man. It started from verse 20. Elisha died and they buried him. And the bands of the Moabites invaded the land at the coming in of the year. It came to pass as they were burying a man that behold, they spied a band of men and they cast the man into the sepulchre of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood up on his feet. Beloved brothers and sisters, want to see God like never before. Faith must be in God. Self, flesh, pride, arrogance, glory, ostentation must die. All of you and none of me is what my heart cries for, Lord. May I decrease that you may increase. May you be the Lord of all. All of you and none of me Christ for Lord, may I decrease that you may increase, may you be the Lord of all. Faith in God, death to self. Number three is passion for God. When you love God with a passion, when you are hungry for all that God has, when you refuse to be satisfied with where you are, then you are set. Psalm 63 verse 1 to 2, O Lord my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsted for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is to see thy power, your glory, to see your almightiness. Hunger that cannot be conquered. The more you see, the more you want to see. The more I know you, the more I want to know you. Jesus, more. And so, you are, you are yearning, you are passionate, you are hungry. Then you will see his glory. Satisfied and settled people, they never see the best of God. There are those, the Bible says, warn to them that are at ease in Zion. Amos chapter 6 verse 1. At ease in Zion. Satisfied and settled people. They never see the best of God. And so, we have faith in God. We have death to self. We have passion for God. And passion for God will lead to number four. The life of prayer. 
the life of prayer Elijah was a man of like passions like we are and he prayed James chapter 5 verse 16 he prayed in 1 Kings 17 verse 1 before God whom I stand there shall be no rain nor dew except by my word he prayed Combine faith in God with death to self, with passion for God, and with a life of prayer. Then you are set to see the almightiness of God. I prophesy to somebody, after tonight, you shall see God like never before.